Mark, they got up 19 early. You guys led by 15 to begin the fourth. It just, you know, every quarter was pretty lopsided. How do you just describe the crazy runs in this one? Uh, I mean, it's abnormal, obviously, but 48 minute game, you know, it's just, it speaks to the length of the game and um, that you got to be able to throw your punches, take your punches. Uh, both teams did that tonight. You know, it's a tough, hard fought game, obviously, a tough one to lose, but, um, you know, it's a 48 minute game. That's the lesson from that one. And Jokic and a couple of the first two matchups didn't really look to score um, at times, but missing Murray, missing Porter, it seems like there's more of an emphasis on that. There were a lot of different looks at him. Just how, how do you think you did with that assignment? I mean, he's obviously a tough matchup um, and a great player. And I give him credit. You know, he's on the second night of a back-to-back. He played the whole fourth quarter, played all of overtime. That's 17 straight minutes, you know, on the second night. That's tough to do. Uh, and he did a great job closing it. He's a great player. And then Isaiah Joe gave you guys another big lift off the bench tonight. Just your thoughts on on him? Yeah, I was you know impressed with his readiness, obviously, uh, and the mental. T- I mean, he didn't get off to a great start his first rotation. Uh, he didn't make any shots, um, and didn't seem like he was in much of a rhythm. And then when we went back to him in the second, he really got it going, gave us a lot of space, um, and was ready to play. And I thought he competed defensively as well. You've obviously done it before, but how tough is it to get guys to buy in defensively to what you're trying to get them to do? Um, you know, I thought we obviously got off to a really slow start tonight. That was a big problem. But then from that point on, I thought um, the mistakes we made defensively after the first quarter uh, were the were the types you would expect. You know, it's just like a little late to a rotation. I thought some of the rebounding was their size. Um, there was one play in particular. I remember we had like four guys on the ball, you know, like all over the thing, and it just kind of popped out, and they got it. Those are the ones you live with, you know, and we're never going to be perfect. Um, I thought quarters two through four really, even in the fourth, you know, I thought our offense hurt us more than our defense there when we built that lead. And, uh, you know, I thought the mistakes we made in those quarters were way more indicative of the types of mistakes you want to be making at this point in the season. Coach, you got off to another slow start, down 19. Is there anything glaring to you over this stretch that you can see this team fixing to, to get over that slow start? Because they can turn it on, as we've seen throughout yeah. these games. Yeah, I mean, we've turned it on impressively uh, in some of these games, Washington tonight, New York. Um, you know, we've pointed out, you know, they're aware of it. I think sometimes you just got to, you know, allow them to work through it as long as they know it's a it's a thing. And, um you know, that's where they got to grow through the experience of doing it. You know what I mean? I, th- I do think you can overcoach it and then it becomes like a mental thing. So um, it's something we've emphasized. It's something they're aware of. But at the same time, we're not like beating it up because I think it can go the other way if you do that. It's just my personal opinion. How tough is it to gauge when to bring Shea back in the game? Because normally since the beginning of fourth quarters, you guys have to lead. The offense got a little, little stagnant. Is like in live situations, are you wanting to bring him back before t- before his normal time just come back in, or like it, just how tough is it to say we we need offense? I want a guy that in that can just go get a bucket. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot there. There's uh, the first thing is we have to develop the team, you know, and uh, always having the quickest trigger the minute the game gets tight uh, going to him. It can take confidence from the other guys, and it doesn't force the other guys to work through that. I mean, in order to be the best version of the team, we have to be the best version of the team with or without Shea on the floor. Um, you know, second thing is he needs to have the gas to close the game. You know, and so um, he's he's obviously making a lot of plays when the game grinds down in the fourth quarter, and um, if you go to him too early, you know, you're you're using gas, so to speak, earlier in the fourth, and then. Um, his cumulative minutes over the course of the season, you know, we don't want to just, you know, burn through him. Uh, we got to manage the schedule. We've got to, you know, he can't be up at 40 minutes every night tonight. Obviously went to overtime. That's why he was that high. But um, there's a lot to balance there. And then some nights I go to it a little earlier. That's a little bit of a feel. But I think there's other considerations not to do it just like every single time it gets a little tight in the fourth quarter. Mark, you had Poku back tonight. How do you think he played? Pretty good. I thought he got off to a little bit of a slow start, but our whole team did. And um, once he got it going, I thought his second rotation in the game was really good. Gave us good energy in transition. He helps us on the glass. He helps us at the rim. Uh, wasn't his best game, but I mean, you definitely feel when he's not there, and you definitely felt him back tonight. 
you didn't go with Josh to, to end the fourth. You went back to him over time. Just sort of explain that decision. Um, I mean, some of it's just like overtime getting fresh legs back on the court uh, and not just like, you know, rolling with, especially when you know they're going to keep their guys out there. So uh, that Milwaukee game, you know, I thought taught me that lesson. You know, we rolled with the same lineup and I thought we fatigued in the second overtime in Milwaukee. And so um, I have confidence in Josh, went back to him there. Um, and I also, the group that I started overtime with was the group that started the third, and they did a good job. So I had confidence in that group um, because of the way we started the third quarter. And so uh, those are some of the considerations. Can you uh, talk about what led to you getting that technical tonight? Um, I mean, I usually don't get them. I don't like getting them. The game ended, the regulation ended in a tie. You know, if theoretically, did he make the free throw, the technical free throw? No. He missed it? Good. Well, I feel better now. Um, I was still yelling. Um, I mean, uh, there, 89 percent of shooting fouls in the NBA are called in the paint. That's a fact this year. We lead the league in drives at uh, 66 a game. We lead the league in paint touches at 102 a game. The next closest team in drives is 55. We lead, on average, 66 to 55. We are in the paint more than anybody in the NBA. That's a fact. 89 percent of fouls are called in the paint. That's a fact. And so. I was frustrated tonight because we were attacking and in the paint, and I didn't think we were getting freedom of movement whistles. And um, you know, I, I we're 28th in free throw attempts this season in terms of free throw rate, and the other teams that are you know in the paint as much as we are are top five, six in free throw rate. So um, it's cumulative frustration um, that I'm pointing out in real time. Obviously, I was probably a little hot tonight. I probably deserved it. Um, I'm not contesting it at all, but. Um, you know, I just I'm trying to help our guys and, and certainly trying to point out to the crews that we have the amount that we're putting pressure on the defense. And if the defense is illegal, um, you know, the, the call should be made. But, you know, I respect those guys. I thought the second half they had really good control of the game um, and liked how they called it. That wasn't why we lost. You mentioned earlier that from the second quarter through the rest of the game that the defense wasn't necessarily the problem as much as the offense. Was there anything that stood out as being the harder part on that side of the floor? Um, I thought we just kind of grinded down a little bit. We were a little bit more uh, stagnant. The ball didn't move side to side as much. I thought we got ourselves to kind of a possession mentality, which you have to have in the last like five minutes of the game. I thought we got to that a little early. The first group that was out there was in it. Uh, and then when we came back with our subs in the fourth, we were still kind of in it. And uh, the pace of play, you know, up the floor and side to side wasn't where it needed to be. And I think that impacts rhythm. And so, um, you know, it's something we've got to look at. You know, obviously they paced with us. They made, you know, Gordon made some shots. They got some rebounds. They had some timely plays. But um, when you have a lead like that, you got to keep the scoreboard moving. Derek Parker, Inside the Thunder, you shot better from three than you did the field. What were you seeing from Denver that allowed that? Um, well, I mean, Isaiah was 7 for 10. That had a lot to do with the threes tonight. Um, I thought we got good three-point looks, uh, you know, his his included and also the other guys. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, we'll have to take a look at it. Some of it might have been contested. I thought we missed some easy ones around the basket too. But, um, you know, I thought we scored enough tonight. I thought the defense to start the game was, was tough. And I thought, like I said, the fourth quarter offense wasn't where it needed to be. But... Uh, we just got to keep learning from these ones. You know, they sting, but you got to learn from them. And we improved on a lot of things coming out of the last couple games tonight. So there's some encouragement there, too. Do you think you need to add a pregame speech to your arsenal? For the first quarter? I just, yeah. you have that, the halftime speech comment. So I don't know if you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's no speeches pregame or halftime. It's 82. You know, they stop listening anyways. But if you start giving speeches, they really stop listening. So, that it? Hey, real quick, I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I want to wish our fans a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, these are great jobs that we are grateful for every day, um, and we have them because of our fans and the interest in the NBA and also um, you guys delivering uh, to our fans. So I just, from our whole team, I just want to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Same with our fans. Okay, thank you. Wild swings and, um, you know, just both teams really kind of trying to wrestle control of it. We didn't start the game uh, the right way. We just got to fix that. And, you know, teams are going to be physically stronger than us usually. We just got to be physically better and be there for each other. We didn't do that for most of the first half. And then we kind of got back, but I thought we fought it good, but we just got to start the game better. Can you tell me just about some of the looks that you got from 
behind the arc tonight and, and how those, you know, how, how your teammates kind of set you up for those good looks? Yeah, we have guys that are um, driving in, into the paint pretty good and finding the open man. So where, whenever I'm open, so I'm just going to try and shoot the ball. Poku, how did the ankle feel and just being back out there tonight physically? I felt good. Um, felt good. I was I was feeling ready. Um, I'm happy to be back and just trying to help the team get a win. Fortunately, we didn't get it tonight, but I, th I think we had a lot to learn. You know Jokic pretty well. What was it like trying to defend him tonight and, and just even with Murray out, with Porter Jr. out, still he's able to I mean, whoever out. he plays with, he's going to make them better. He's just two times MVP. Um, you got to put all of your five guys on him and try to stop him. He's still going to get his things, but you got to make him work. Thanks, Poku. Thank you, guys. Thanks. All right. Nick Gallo, KCThunder.com. Uh, Isaiah, just what's it like to, to be out there in a game like this with such massive swings both directions and, and trying to stay um, kind of focused the whole time? Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's a competitive game, and that's what we're here for. We're here to be in games like this. It's what makes basketball fun. Um, Unfortunately, we weren't able to pull it out, but being in games like that, it just shows where we are and where we can be. Can you just speak to the, the trust of the team that, you know, you're in and out of the rotation, and yet there's no hesitation to, to find you. There's no hesitation from you to get shots up. Yeah, so pretty much all the credit goes to my, goes to my teammates being able to find me and have that trust and, you know, let me knock down shots because every time I get a shot, it's assisted most of the time because they're, they're not, you know, they're not running away from me. And when I'm open, they look for me. Um, and we just we do have a really good chemistry together. So they're filling me out still, but they do know that I'm a shooter. Isaiah, um, career high 21 for you, 7 of 10 from 3. Just how did it feel, you know, giving – providing that spark off the bench tonight. Yeah, you know me. I just try to make the most of my minutes every time I go in a game. I try to be a spark, try to be, you know, bring energy. Um, and I, that I feel like that's what my job right now, especially as the team is filling me out, just going in there and being a spark. It's one thing to say you can stay ready. It's one thing for the coach to say stay ready. But what are some things that you – do to actually stay ready to come in the game hit seven threes yeah i think i think most of it is more mental than anything you know you got to be mentally locked in mentally locked into the game you have to be engaged in every time out you have to know what sets are running even when you're on the bench you have to know what defensive coverages are in and i think just doing that just kind of helps you be engaged into the game it feels like you're in the game even when you're not so whenever your name is called you're not startled you're not shook you're you're ready immediately You've spent such a short time with Oklahoma City and you've already got your career high. Has anything felt different about being with the Thunder? Uh, it's just the, the group group of guys we have here is just we're, we're a great team on and off the court. We have great chemistry. Um, we do a lot of stuff together. And so just having that and being able to have that trust in each other when we step on the court um, is just one thing that helps us out a lot. So um, I really appreciate the team and the players that we have and the coaching staff because everybody's real close and it kind of helps us on the court. Anything else? Thanks, Isaiah. Thank you.